What's up, everybody? It's Bear. I wanted to show you guys a handful of knives that I've come to love and respect uh, that I for bushcraft, which is kind of an essential part of preparedness. Uh, it gets a lot of glory. Uh, and knife skills are obviously important in preparedness, although I, I tend to reject the concept of people moving into the woods like this and staying in a place like this in perpetuity. Um, when the world ends, I'm just going to bug out to the woods and die. So don't do that. Don't die. We don't want you to do that. However, uh, for the concept of bugging out and or making temporary shelter, knowing how to do bushcrafty things is important, says me. And as such, I have a number of knives here that I'm going to spin this camera around and show you. Go through them just a little bit, give you my thoughts and feels on each knife. And uh, maybe if you're looking for an Essie or an Ontario Knife Company or a Mora or uh, this guy right here. Phenomenal. Yeah, um, we're going to talk about these or maybe a Holtzbrook sax. Who knows? Let me spin this around. We'll get started. All right, so what we have here is a bare field knife made by Fleming Fabrications. Uh, look them up there in Texas. Awesome, made in America. ADCR MOV2 steel, phenomenal knife, this guy. This is the Mora uh, companion in the um, carbon steel model, and I'm gonna show you why that's a good thing and a bad thing in a moment. This is the Ontario Knife Company Rat 3. This is the SE4. This is the Ontario Knife Company Rat 5. This is the SE6. And this is the Ontario Knife Company RTAC 2. Yeah, we use our things around here. Not saying we're great at it, but we at least use them. And this is a Holtzbrook Axe, 24 inch camp axe. So we'll just go through these, tell you um, what I like about them. This is kind of my entry level knife right here the mora knife and it, it is raining currently but pfft, whatever carbon steel blade why does that matter carbon steel rusts there you go and this one frankly was inside of a pack that had been neglected for a year and i pulled it out and looky there there it is now this is not a full tang knife meaning the blade the steel of the blade does not come from here all the way through the end of the handle it's like a three-quarter tang knife and so a lot of people say yeah well you know that's cool and all but you can't baton with that yeah that's not what i use it for i actually do a lot of butchering with uh, these knives and part of you know surviving in the wilderness is processing animals and so i like this for processing animals it's also it's a scandy grind so it stays sharp and it's very easy to sharpen and it's affordable. These are like 15 to 20 bucks. And the carbon steel means that you can strike a ferro rod and uh, throw sparks. So that's cool. I like it for that quite a lot. Downsides, you keep it clean, keep it oiled, or it will rust. And this is surface rust. I can probably buff that out, but eh, you know, maybe, maybe not. We'll see what happens. Truth in advertising around here. This is the Mora Companion. This is the Ontario Knife Company Rat 3, which was my EDC in Ranger carry position for a long time. It's got a tech lock on the back here, and um, proof is in the pudding. Take a look at the wear on that knife. This guy has seen some stuff, man. Ontario Knife Company right there. This is the Rat 3. I love this knife. It's a little itty bitty knife, um, but I think it's like a three and a quarter inch blade. Good choil here. The jimping on the back is good, so you can really choke up on this knife. The handle is svelte. I like that. It's a little narrow handle. It's got a lanyard loop in the bottom. Uh, micarta scales, which used to be pretty grippy, but now are essentially worn smooth. As you can see, even the serrations, um, this knife has been through some stuff but I love it. This is a really good small knife um, for fine work, for you know feather sticks or opening packages as most of us Amazon warriors are prone to do. That's the Rat 3 from Ontario Knife Company and I like it. This is the SE4, uh, frankly pretty new to my collection. I haven't done much of anything with this knife yet other than carry it in Ranger carry a few times, again with another tech lock on the back. 
And this knife also is your SE4 right there from Randall's Outdoor Adventure. And it has very sm svelte G10 plastic scales on it, which I like. It's nice in hand, has almost the same exact handle style and blade profile as the Rat 3 that I just showed you. Yeah, we've got a drop of rain on there. Oh, well. Good uh, choil here. Good jimping on the back so you can choke up. Fine edge on this for making feather sticks or whatever. This would be a good uh, woodworking knife. EDC knife, um, soldier's knife, eh, maybe, maybe. It depends on how big your hands are and what you're doing. If I hold it down here, you can see it does not come to the bottom of my hand. If I choke up on it, the butt end, and obviously full tang, piece of steel all the way through, does just start to protrude at the end. However, I don't wanna be shoving this into things with my finger this close to that insanely sharp blade. And SE does send very sharp knives so that's the se4 i like it but uh don't have a lot of time on this knife yet haven't done anything more exciting than uh pop a couple of tops off of beer beer bottles with it and open a couple of packages and make a couple of feather sticks but it's looking like a good contender and i really do like the handle profile on this and the blade was dumb sharp when i got it and it comes with a good sheath which is cool uh speaking of sheaths this is the Ontario Knife Company Rat 5, and this sheath sucks. It's one of the primary complaints I have about OKC, Ontario Knife Company. They make great knives, but their sheaths are garbage. I would rather pay $30 to $50 more for a knife that came with a good sheath. Uh, so, note to OKC. Now, this is the Rat 5. See that there? From Ontario Knife Company. And... You can see I had to take a file to the jimping to make it a little bit better. And I had to take a file to this handle to profile the handle. These are my Carta scales. Because in my hands, this, see how blocky this thing is? We just do a quick comparison between the width of the handle scales between the two. There's the SE4 and there's the Rat 5. It's a really chunky knife, the Rat 5. And for some of y'all, you may really be into that. I have size extra large plus hands, okay? I wear an extra large glove. If I buy a leather glove, I get an extra large. I force it on my hand. I get it wet, then I wear it dry, and then they fit really snugly. Snugly. He said snugly. This is also full tang, about 3 16 of an inch thick blade. I love the profile of this blade, though. It's kind of like um, a short buoy profile that the belly of the blade right here, this is a great knife for butchering. I've processed several animals with this, and I like this knife. I like the choil, again, here, the jimping. Um, you can really choke up on it for fine work, like caping the skin away from the meat. I like that a lot. And because of the profile, if you're slicing through something, you have a limited amount of blade engaged with the object that you're slicing through at one time, which means you get more pressure, which means you get a smoother, faster cut. So I like this a lot for processing. I don't know how well one would be served for bushcraft, man, with this knife, but I like it a lot. Uh, overall value, I think, is unfortunately pretty low because, like I said, I had to take a chainsaw file and profile these scales a little bit to get it to lock into my hand because prior to doing that, it was so chunky, so blocky that it was basically unusable. Um, and that being said, again, the sheath, if look at the difference between these two sheaths, okay? This is a good sheath. Why is my autofocus lock on? Because um, a raindrop fell on it, cool. This is a good sheath, this not so much. I'd rather spend $30, $50 more and get one of these with this knife than this cheap nylon that's gonna fall apart, okay? But that's the Ontario Knife Company Rat 5 in OD. This rain is really jacking with us, y'all. It's whatever. And then next, we have the venerable SE6 and the cool guy bushcraft thing with, oh, it's got the thing and it look, it's got a little toggle on it and like a little tin pouch I can, I can put some matchsticks in there and some lead weights and some hooks and some fishing line because there's lots of fish running around out here in these woods. Um, 
you know, whatever. It's got this on it right here. And you put your cool guy stuff in here. Very cool, super cool guy stuff for sure. Buckle, there we go. And then it's got this. You pop this open, pull that out, and boom, SE6. I've used this knife a little bit. I've not used this knife a lot bit, but I do like it. The profile of the handle on this, while larger than the SE4, is not nearly as blocky as the Rat 5. Good choil, good jimping, so you can choke up on it. It is large enough to do soldiery things with if one had to. Stick it into the bellies of your enemies or whatever. Um, made in USA, which rocks. Very cool. Why won't you focus? Focus, you dumb. Oh, well. Good blade. Well-profiled blade. Just slightly smaller than 3 16 in diameter. About five inches long. Um, I'd say probably the blade profile is maybe five, five and a quarter inch long. Um, well, it says it's a six, so maybe it's six inches long. I could be wrong. Micarta scales, which are very nice. Obviously, they're removable. You take those screws out, good to go. I like this knife a lot. Full tang, clearly. It's, a, it's an expensive knife. Does it need the ultra cool guy, bush crafty, I'm gonna build myself an Abraham Lincoln log cabin in the woods sheath? Um, you be the judge. You be the judge of that. But there's no doubt that between the ABS plastic that's in this sheath and this little carrier and this thing and it's molly compatible and a belt loop this is a significantly better sheath granted it's an additional cost but it's a significantly better sheath than something like what you're going to get with the ontario knife company this is a really good knife probably why it's so popular um, as far as the cool guy bushcraft stuff goes very good knife and it's just the right size for processing wood it's big enough for butchering animals it's small enough for doing carving. It's on the high end right there, but, but it'll work. And then lastly, as far as knives go, the Chopper Extraordinaire, Ontario Knife Company, Artac 2. This thing is a hand sword, big blocky micarta scales, which in this case actually helps it to lock into your hand. Lanyard loop on the bottom, quarter inch thick. Uh, the blade is, I don't know, 14 inches long maybe it does have a choil here but i don't know why why are you choking up on this maybe to shave some wood maybe maybe but this thing's phenomenal i have two of these we put them through their paces all the time they're great for batoning which is primarily what it's used for they're also great for knocking down saplings processing wood uh things like that um it's i carried this knife for a long time before I started carrying pack axes. Especially when I lived in the southern areas of the world, central Texas, north Texas, where they refer to small bushes as trees. You don't need an ax, you need a hand ax. Now other areas of the world where there are trees actual, having an actual ax is a good idea. And this is the Holtzbrook uh, camp ax. Swedish steel, relatively affordable. There you go, relatively affordable Swedish steel, Holtzbrook there, hickory handle, well hung. Everybody go ahead and laugh at that. Really good, really good dollar value camp axe. I've been very impressed with these. I've got two of them, a 20 inch and a 24 inch. I think very highly of them. So that might be something to consider as well. And then the bear knife, five inch. Well, this one's a six inch. This is the only one in the world like it. Um, and these come from Fleming's Fabrication. Like I said, ADCR MOV2 steel, 800 grit bevel grind, acid etched. This one is a six inch. All the rest of them in the world are a five inch and this was sent to me by Travis at Fleming Fabrications. I can't afford this knife. It's that good. It's like a quarter inch thick, 
absolutely awesome knife, razor sharp. I've used this quite a bit and it shows, shows zero signs of wear and tear. I love it. It's absolutely awesome. And then he also made this badass Kydex sheath fort with a little uh, ferro rod here and some quick clips on the back. Just awesome work. And so if you if you want a custom knife, you might consider uh, Travis at Fleming Fabrications. He does phenomenal work. Out of all of this, obviously this is gonna be a budget driven decision. If I had a little bit of money to spend, just a little bit of money to spend, I would get the Mora. Is it the best knife? Hardly, but it's a great entry level knife. If I had a moderate amount of money to spend, for bush crafty things, I would probably get this here, the SE4. Really, I just love the way this fits in the hand. I just love it. And it's small enough to butcher and process with. It's large enough to do a little bit of woodworking with. You're not gonna baton anything of any size with this, but I like it for a utilitarian knife, good size. And it's about a hundred bucks-ish with this sheath and the tech lock which is unfortunate, I'd love to say the Rat 5, which is about 70 bucks with this sheath, but the amount of work that I had to do to this thing, to say nothing of the fact that I had to sharpen it when I got it as well, I was less than impressed, which is a shame because I love Ontario Knife Company. That was a, a major miss. But once I dressed it up, once I put an edge on it, once I fixed the handle profile, um, this has become a wonderful knife. I'm a big fan of this knife. I just don't like the fact that I spent 70 bucks on something that then required hours of my time to make it usable. And the sheath sucks. Ontario Knife Company, in love, brothers and sisters, make better sheaths. I will pay you more for better sheaths. This knife here, Ontario Knife Company, comes with the same crappy ballistic nylon sheath, which frankly has held up the two of them that I have. I just don't like it near as much as I could. This thing is an absolute beast, absolute beast. I think you're in the 120 price mark for this. And if you need to process large wood, that's what I use this for again. I love it. But I think the overall winner here, unless you want to drop 400 plus dollars on a custom knife is the SE6. And I understand why people uh, damn near worship this knife, which of course they shouldn't do. That's bowing down to false idols, but what a great knife. It's the appropriate size. For what it is, it's a good value. I wouldn't say it's affordable, but it's a good value. It's big enough to process firewood. It's small enough to process animals. It's robust enough that you can carve and shave with it. It came sharp out of the box. The handle profile is very good, it has good jimping. The choil here is functional. It's full tang, it's got a lanyard loop. The sheath doesn't suck. In fact, the sheath might be too awesome. It might be too much sheath for what it is, frankly. This knife, I think out of everything that I have on display here is a phenomenal, phenomenal knife and probably the winner, which means I should probably spend some more time with it. So, if I could only pick one, the SE6. Hey, tell me in the comments, what do you think? You're blurry because there's rain on the camera. Let me style my hair for you. How do I look? It's gorgeous. Thanks for coming along for the ride, Bear Nation. I appreciate y'all. If you found some value in this video, please consider liking and subscribing and maybe uh, share it out to some people that you know. And like I said, hit me in the comments and tell me why the SE6 is the best knife out here or it's not, Bear. What about this knife? What do you think? What do you think? Bless y'all. Shalom.